It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about a really great tool called NetDiscover. I want to give you a little background here. I started actually setting up PFSense a while back and I did a video on it so you guys can go check that out. And I haven't really done much with it since then because I've been kind of waiting to get some networking stuff done around my house, which basically means I've been waiting to run the Ethernet cable through my attic and around my house, which was not easy, by the way. Um, I don't know if you know, but in, in southern parts of the United States, at the very least, most houses don't have finished attics. And they're really just a place for the contractors to run vents for your air conditioning or your heating and to run wires for all of your electrical and really it's extremely unfinished it's just got a bunch of uh, insulation and, and other stuff that's blown in it's not even like the rollout insulation so it's really not intended for you to get up there and do things for the most part occasionally which I have this as well you'll have a little bit of flooring above kind of the garage space where you can store things in the attic if you want to but that's it so if you try to move away from that there's no flooring there's nothing you'll step right through your ceiling if you don't step on the actual girders or the beams or the joists or whatever they're called. Anyways, I got up there, I crawled around, I, I, I finally kind of got to a place where I could run some cables, and they're also run in a big mess. So if you've ever seen the inside of a Mac uh, machine, you'll note that all of the wires were nicely run and clean. This is not how my attic looks. My attic looks like a PC that was built by a seven-year-old in the 90s. It, it's just a big mess of stuff, so it was it was not easy to climb around up there, but... Um, yeah, so moving on. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up. And that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. The next thing I need to do before I can put PFSense to use, because I have my network set up in a very special way, I want to make sure that I have all of the IP addresses that are associated with certain devices the same. I want to set all those things up before I even connect up the PFSense box because PFSense is really going to sit behind my modem and it's going to act not only as my firewall but as my main router. So I've got this kind of network set up that basically I've got the internet here, it comes into my modem which is provided by my cable company and then that's going to go to my firewall, PFSense, and then PFSense is going to go out to these routers. Now they're not actually Linksys routers but you get the idea. So they go out to these routers, these routers have Wi-Fi hotspots, APs, access points, and then they can also be wired access points as well. So really I had to run these cables through my house in order to make this work because I want this to be wired. I've had Eero for a very long time and Eero uses mesh Wi-Fi. And when I got Eero back in 2018, it was really great. It was the top of the line kind of mesh Wi-Fi. It was probably one of the best ones out there just from all the reviews. For my own personal use, it has been tremendous, but it has been slowly getting worse and it's gotten to where it's not as reliable. And I don't know what the purpose is or the reason is behind that. It, it just... For whatever reason, I just I have lots of interruptions and things, and, and I don't think it's my cable provider. It could be, but I really think it's the Eero system, and, and I just need something that's got a little bit more stability behind it, which is going to be a wired setup. Now, the one thing I don't show here is that I actually have a fifth branch off of this thing that's going to go out into my office where I am recording right now. So there's a lot of stuff, and I have a lot of devices, but I don't know how to get all these devices information without just manually doing it, and I don't really want to do it manually. So I thought, okay, there's got to be a tool, and I've, I was using a tool not long ago to find the IP of a camera, and I figured out this is a really great tool, and that tool is called NetDiscover. So if you've never heard of this, this is a tremendous tool for finding things on your network. Now, there's Angry IP Scanner. It, it may use NetDiscover under the covers. I don't know. Um, but it, it finds some really great stuff, but NetDiscover even found things that I couldn't find with Angry IP Scanner. NetDiscover found things that I didn't find with Wireshark. NetDiscover found things that I didn't find with Ping or ARP or any of the other normal things that I was using. 
Now, it may use all those things under the covers, but maybe whoever writes this knew more about those those tools than I do. So it seems to find them with less effort uh, whenever I use it. So I wanted to show you guys Net Discover today because it's really awesome. Um, there's a GitHub project. It hasn't been messed with in years, but it still functions. It still works. You can still install it and you can still use it, which is awesome. Now, this is the Kali Linux page, but I actually just am running Pop! OS um, in, my, in my house where I used it uh, earlier. It's Ubuntu. But I'm going to just show you how to install this thing real quick. So you just open up a terminal. So you're going to use apt if you're using a Ubuntu or Debian based system. If you're using a Red Hat system, you're going to use RPM or DNF for Fedora. You might use Yum if you're using CentOS. And then if you're using Arch, you're going to use Pac-Man. If you're using um, OpenSUSE, I believe it's Zip, Zipper, Z-Y-P-P-E-R, I think is the tool that they use. So you have to kind of check that one out because I'm not as familiar with that one. But... There should be a tool to install this, and it's just sudo apt install net discover dash y. Make sure you spell install correctly, because I didn't right there. And when you do this, it's going to ask for your super user password. So type that into your system. It's going to go out there and get it, and it's done. That's it. There's nothing else to do to install this thing. Now, if you do net discover, I think we can just do help. Yeah, it'll give you the help. Now, you have to use sudo if you want to run the actual command to do something with it. But for the help, you can just run it without the sudo. But right here, so you can see who, who this guy is, and you can see his Gmail, which is kind of cool. Uh, you know, don't spam him or anything, but yeah. So netdiscover-i. So this is the interface you want to use to run the netdiscover process. So does, do you want to use you know wireless, or do you want to use your wired connection? It's, it's completely up to you which one you pick, but there you go. You need to use that one for sure, so the dash i. Then if you want to set a range of IP addresses that you're looking in specifically, which can make things go faster than you would use the range, and this is the, the way you would do it, which slash 24 means all of the things with a dot six address and then every every address after the dot there. If you did 16, then that would be all of the range from here, 0 to 255, and here, 0 to 255. And again, if you did dot 8, 0 to 255, 0 to 255, 0 to 255. So you can do some really massive scans through ranges if you want to use the range stuff. Um, the cool thing about it is if you don't use the range part, it'll just kind of listen for traffic and show you traffic. That's how I found this IP camera that comes from the manufacturer with a static IP set that is the weirdest static IP on earth. I have no idea why they do this. I don't know if like their QA people get them and they set it and then they forget to send it, set it back to the HCP or something. I have no idea, but the weirdest thing on earth and I could not find that camera. So I found NetDiscover and it, it immediately found it like in, in no time. So it was awesome. Um, so you've got a few other things here. You can filter the scan. You've got passive mode, which means don't send anything, just sniff, which means just listen for the for the connection. Um, and then M, you know, files, so scan a list of known Macs and host names. If you want to provide a file, you can. Uh, filter, customize a PCAP filter expression. I don't really know how to do that, so nothing I'm going to do. But um, then you've got time. So how, how long to sleep between each ARP request in milliseconds, so you can set some timing to kind of slow things down if you're afraid it's getting skipped over somehow. Uh, the count, number of times to send each ARP request. So if you think something won't respond the first time and you want it to run more than once, you can set a number of times you want it to send that. The node, so the last source IP octet used for scanning from 2 to 253. So if you want to scan a specific uh, node, you can. And then D, which is ignore home config files uh, or ignore, yeah, ignore home config files for auto scan. So basically ignore any config files that are in your home directory. And then F, enable fast code or fast mode scan, which is kind of cool. You can save a lot of time that way. And then P, which is, and this is capital P, print the results in a format suitable for parsing by another program. I, this is very important to me. So this is why you're going to see why this is important to me here in a minute. And then dash L, which is similar to dash P, but it also continues listening after the active scan is completed. And I'll tell you, there's a difference between these, and it doesn't look like it on the screen, but whenever you try to actually use the, the, the results, there is. So we'll go through that as well. And then dash in, do not print the header, that's fine. And dash S, enable sleep time sup suppression if you use the capital S. So I don't know why you would use little s and then capital S, but maybe there's a reason. So just keep that in mind that you can do that. So I'm going to clear out the terminal here. And we're going to do sudo net disk. Actually, first, we're going to do IPA show. So I need to find my my interface name. Uh, and on Ubuntu, it's always kind of a weird name. It's never just ETH0, unfortunately. So we're going to go back to the top here. It's ENO1 on this one. This is a Pop! OS machine. 
Um, I also have a wireless interface somewhere right here. So WLP2S0. I mean, why wouldn't it be that instead of just WLAN0? But yeah, WLP2S0 is my wireless interface, or I can use ENO1. So I'm going to use ENO1 because that's my wired interface. Um, so we'll clear this out and we'll do sudo net discover dash i. And we're going to do one, uh, ENO1. Let me make sure I spelled that. I didn't spell that correctly. Let's go back. <laughs> there we go. Net discover uh, ENO1. So now we're going to do dash P for print the results, basically. And then we want to do the dash R, and that's 192.168.10.0 slash 24. So my, I know my subnet is on dot 10. So I want to find the devices that are on dot 10. So I'm going to hit this and let it start running. And you can see it starts coming up pretty fast. And it shows me all of these devices that are running on my network. And it gives me a nice table readout of the information. So I can actually grab this. I can take it and I can copy it all the way where it ends right here. And I can copy this with a right click if I want to or control shift C if I want to. And now I can go open up calc from LibreOffice here. Oh, it opened up on the wrong window. That's okay. And then I can right click and do paste. And it's going to come up with the import wizard. And you'll notice right here, it's got this as a single thing. It just sees it as one big block of stuff. We don't want that. But in calc, you can do fixed width. If you try to do space, it doesn't work. It, it just gets ugly. If you, if you undo space, it doesn't work. Tab, it doesn't work. If you do space without tab, it still doesn't work. But if you do fixed width, you can start to tell it, hey, this is where I need this thing to be, and this, and you may want to move over a little bit instead. Um, so if we do, I think if we do clear, if we undo this, it'll clear it if we do it. I right, kept them. Okay. I don't really like having those. I don't know how to get rid of them, though. Let's see. Can I get rid of it? Oh, I can move it. There we go. Now we can go here, and then we can get another one, and then here. So if you look at the, the length of these things, you can break this apart pretty easily. You just want to make sure you didn't cut off any of your numbers. That all looks good. We're going to hit OK. And it brings it in and it puts it into columns, which is great. This makes it really easy for me to go grab this stuff. So now you can just kind of highlight all of these headers up here, of course. Um, let me do this again. And then double click on that line. It'll spread those out where everything kind of fits the way it needs to. And then you can delete this row if you want to. You can delete the row above it at the top if you want to. You just want this row here. That's the important one. And then, of course, all of these things. What I'm really interested in is what is this device and what is its MAC address? And I didn't even get the IP address. What did I do? Hang on. Let's go back. It does have the IP. Did I miss it? I must have missed it. Okay, let's go back and try again. But you get the idea. So I'm just going to hit uh, don't save. And... So you can see here everything that it gives me. It gives me all the IP addresses, all the MAC addresses, and this is stuff that we'll need whenever we're trying to actually set up our PFSense box. So I want to set a bunch of static addresses. PFSense doesn't really let you set static addresses, but it lets you do a DHCP lease or I guess uh, you know a saved area where you can set these addresses and they're kind of static. It's kind of weird, but anyways, we'll talk about that. Um, so. I'll show you real quick the difference between the P and the F, though. So if we go do, or L, I'm sorry. Um, if we do that same command, and now we do L. So you notice P, it ended, and it gave me back the command prompt. So this one's going to scan. It's going to go find all of these devices. It's just, just doing an ARP search, basically. And you notice now it says it found 78 hosts, okay? And it says continue to listen. And it's, so it's still listening for things out on the network that start talking. So it found one. And this is one of my, uh, I believe this is going to be one of my bulbs or, or something like that. Um, basically that it found that's one of my Shelly bulbs. So all these ones that say Espressive I think are Shelly things. So you can see up here all of these things. It's got a lot of Espressive. So I want to know what those are because I have those set with specific addresses or IP addresses. And I need them to get those IP addresses again because that's how Home Assistant works with those Shelly devices. It says, hey, this thing's going to be assigned this IP address in Home Assistant. Is that okay? And I have to say, yeah, let me go set it static. So these need to be the same. So all these ones, especially with Espressif, need to be the same. I've just set up a lot of stuff on my network to be static. The bad thing is with Eero, it's in a phone app. And 
I have found nothing and no possible way to export that data from their phone app. Which I guess for them is smart because it makes it a pain in the butt for me to switch away from them, just like you're seeing right here. So I have to go find a tool like this where I can actually get all of my data and try to go put it into the system. Unfortunately for me, that means that it's a pain. I have to go do a bunch of work. But there are nice tools like NetDiscover that let you kind of figure out what these things are. So this is a short video today. I just wanted to show you how NetDiscover works and kind of show you what what function it does and what function it serves. I've already got this saved in another file. Um, I've got all my devices. So now I can actually go start filling everything out in my PFSense before I go hook it up into my network. And when I hook it up and start everything up, everything should get the same IP it already has and I can just continue forward. I don't have to worry about going and fixing a bunch of things. Now there may be a few things like here where it says unknown vendor. I don't know what this is. I don't know if I set this static or if it's just a DHCP address. But the easy thing for me is I can just grab this, go paste it into a browser and see if I can browse to it, or I can paste it into an SSH command and see if I can SSH to it. And that, that'll tell me what this is if I need to know what it is. Most likely if it says unknown vendor, I have not set it as a static address, and it's just an address that kind of changes on its own at some point. So you'll, you'll kind of notice those things come up as well, like this one that says 0000. I don't even know what this would be. It's nothing. So nothing I need to worry about. But these other ones, I might want to know what they are and find out what they are and then give them that specific address so I can list it properly inside of PFSense. I hope that NetDiscover helps you with something. I hope this is a useful tool. To me, it's been invaluable, and I was super glad to find out about it. So you guys go out there, get it, grab it, try it, see if it helps you out. I really like it. It's really been great. If this video helped you, like subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.